Hello and welcome back to the Anti-Aging Hacks podcast. Today, my guest is John Gray, who is the author of the most well-known and trusted relationship book of all time, Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus. USA Today listed his book as one of the top 10 most influential books of the last quarter century. In hardcover, it was the number one best-selling book of the 1990s. Dr. Gray's books were translated into approximately 45 languages, in more than 100 countries and continue to be bestsellers. Dr. Gray has written over 20 books. His Mars Venus book series has forever changed the way men and women view their relationships. He has appeared repeatedly on Oprah, as well as on the Dr. Oz show today, CBS This Morning, Good Morning America, and others. He has been profiled in Time, Forbes, USA Today, and People. With that said, John, it's so good to have you back on the Anti-Aging Hacks podcast. If you'd like to get thicker, fuller, and stronger hair, then make sure to check out FullyVital.com. The team's come up with fantastic and natural products that help re- rejuvenate your hair, but also delay and reverse gray hairs. So if you're interested in better hair, go to fullyvital.com and use the code anti-agingHacks for 15% off your order. Are you enjoying the shows on this channel? Then please make sure to hit the subscribe button down below so you can get notified when we release new episodes. Our goal with this show is to help you and give you practical tips that you can use to slow down and reverse your aging so you can live and feel younger and live your best life. With that said, let's get on with the show. I'm really happy to be with you. So you are an, the relationship expert of this generation and certainly also my parents' generation. I remember growing up as a young kid, I think I was 12 or 13, I saw your book in my, parent, in my parents' bedroom and I was like, huh, interesting book, never thought about it. And then a couple of years ago, I got into your work and into male and female dynamics and read the book and I was just taken aback by how much good information there is. So for an introduction to the audience of yourself, could you tell us how you got into relationships and relationship advice? I keep it really short because we have a lot of good things to talk about. Yes, we do. But, uh, uh, I grew up uh, in the 60s. You get high, but then you would crash. The Beatles said you could meditate and you can get high and you don't crash. Well, after 50 years of meditation, I'm high all the time. I don't take drugs, but I don't crash. It's all, it's all happening all the time. Uh, so that's A. And so B, I did nine years as a celibate monk, as his assistant, living with him, teaching his programs and so forth. Uh, so that was a big part of my life. I tend to be a natural sort of answer guy. I like to say things and learn things that most people don't know because I figure, hey, if I didn't know that, I bet there's some other people that don't know that. And that would be very interesting. So that's been my whole career is trying to figure things out and help people. So I was really involved with all of that. And then when I was 28, 29, uh, after being pure celibate during those 20s. As a teenager, I was very active. I love sex. But then I gave it up for divine, and I got divine. The re- enlightenment's a real thing. It's a wonderful thing. And then after enlightenment, you go through what's called the dark night of the soul. So that's where, that came up in marriage. Okay, so I was married for two years to one woman, broke my heart. On my, I mean, basically, she fell in love with another guy, married him, then married somebody else, married somebody else. She wow. just wasn't the staying type. But I took it very deeply personal because uh, here I was teaching about enlightened sexuality. So if I'm celibate for nine years and now I go out and start having sex, I had six girlfriends and each one I'd interview about with them, what makes sex great for you? And I got six different answers. OK, so mm-hmm. I figured, OK, and none of those answers is what I want in sex. So I figured we are really, really different. So that began my career of understanding how many women were different in the bedroom which nobody can dispute that, right? I mean, as much as people want to say we're all the same, come on, Uh, look at what goes on in the bedroom. We're completely different. And all the hormones that make the bedroom happen are the hormones that have to be generated outside the bedroom. So that's what came up with, you know, I realized in my marriage, the first marriage for two years, she was like helping me. She pursued me. She wanted to stay with me. There was one of those girlfriends that I wanted to pursue, but she says, you're not ready because... I was like free love, you know, why polyamorous and all that. Yeah, I had my sure. girlfriends. And she said, no, I want a husband. I've got two little children from a previous marriage. I want a man who wants to take care of me, who's there for me. And, and I tried to marry her because that was, that's masculine love. But the other woman, I had feminine love, which is I was very appreciative of her. She said, yes, to everything I wanted. She had a house. I could live in her house. She marketed and promoted me. She was my assistant and my editor. And then she fell in love with somebody else because that's called role reversal. Once we start understanding the male female dynamics, that's the history of my life there. So I married Bonnie uh, and had children together. We have a great life together. She's passed now, but now I'm remarried. Uh, people say, how'd you get married? So oh, I waited two years just because I want to fully grieve and let go of Bonnie, but Bonnie's still in my heart. It just doesn't feel pain when I think about her. 
Yeah. And I'm remarried. I have a beautiful life again because I have relationship skills. And relationships can be so, so difficult without the skills that I teach. I mean, I the, my wife now, I would have divorced a long time ago if I didn't understand how to interact. With Bonnie, I probably felt like I wanted to divorce her a hundred times uh, at times, you know, it because because the communication wasn't working. Here I was a very sensitive soul, you know, and 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 a, a very loving. And when you give a lot, you want to get back. And if I didn't get back what I expected, then my feelings were hurt. Same thing for her. She gave a lot. We're both very loving people. But if she doesn't get back what she expects, then their feelings get hurt. And then the heart shuts down. And I would go to my cave and I would pout. And I got to get out of this marriage. How dare someone treat me that way? And then I had a process of learning how to forgive. Okay, I'm very good at finding forgiveness, processing my feelings. So I have all these skills that I teach in my classes. We'll cover a few of them, but really people need to, if you want marriage to work today, you really have to understand women as a man, women are very different from us. And we'll think they're crazy if we don't understand how women think and feel. And we'll yeah. think it, it's impossible to have a successful relationship. And same thing with women. And then we add to that the, the dynamic in America, which is 50, 60 percent, depending upon what state you're in. If you're in California, it's much higher uh, of divorce. So you got all these girls and boys growing up without fathers in the home, over 60 percent growing up without a father in the home. How can a girl know what to expect from a man, how to get what you need from a man, how to trust a man, how to interpret a man correctly? And same thing for a little boy, how to deal with a mother who's not happy. You know, if mm -hmm. your mother is trying to raise a child today alone, she is not happy. Okay, right. or She does not experience her happiness potential. And she'll tell you, I'm overwhelmed. I have no time. I have to do this. I have no money. I feel pressured. All that stuff. It's it's like a, a kind of a living hell to um, to raise children all by yourself, whether it be a man raising them or a, a, a woman raising them. We need partnership. And we've lost that. So our lives are filled with stress. So that's a good yeah. intro. Okay. No, that's great. Thank you, John. So I think over the last couple of years, this male-female dynamic has blown up on social media. There's podcasts about it. There's clips on YouTube, Instagram that are going mega viral of people having very strong opinions on what men want and what women want and how, how it's all backwards these days. So I want to bring some facts to your attention and get some input from you on these facts. So a very large global survey in 2024, April of this year, found that younger men are becoming more conservative worldwide, but particularly in America. And also younger men are having much less sex. They're, the number of men that were, have, that were sexless before the age of 30 has tripled from 8% in 2008 to 27% in 2018. So a third of all, almost a third of men are virgins by the time they're 30 years old or uh, approaching the age of 30, which seems insane to me. How do you make, what do you make of this data? I hadn't heard that study. <laughs> yeah, I'll share it with you after. It takes my breath away. It takes my breath away. I, I knew that it was dramatically going down. Okay, so that, that's a, an amazing study. It's approaching, approaching the Japanese statistics, which are uh, uh, over like 35% of males uh, have never had sex with a real girl. Uh, they have sex online. All these guys are having sex online. So. Yeah. Let me tell you about masculinity. Our, our whole concept of life is only do what you have to do. It's efficiency. And masculine energy is efficiency. Well, women would call it laziness, but actually it uh, can show up that way at times. But it is efficiency. Efficiency means only do what you have to do. If I don't have to do something, why do it? So as soon as women started making money, a huge chunk of masculinity went away, which is mm -hmm. before I could have sex when I was growing up, I had to have a job and get married. That's the only way you could have sex. I mean, that was, it changed in the 60s. I get that. But I remember for me having sex the first time as a teenager. Afterwards, my experience was this was heaven. It was the most amazing thing that happened to me. I'm lying in bed with this girl. And after a while, I couldn't breathe. I had to start getting away. I was sleeping on the other side of the bed. It wasn't that big of a bed. And then I couldn't breathe. And then I laid on the ground and she says are you all right I said oh yeah I have a back problem because I didn't want her to feel like I was rejecting her but I literally couldn't sleep I was uh, it was it went from way up really high to just feeling claustrophobic and that's because men when they get really close to a woman they become claustrophobic so 
you, you need space. So I've written about space in my books and so forth, how important it is for men to have time away, time together, time away, just like in sex, you need to have time away, time get in, get in there, then get out of there, get in there, get out of there. It's, yeah. These are biological functions. It's when you have sex, what happens is testosterone goes really high. You feel like masculine. Okay. That's your male hormone because you have an erection, but to get an erection, your estrogen has to rise as well. And as you're making her happier and you're experiencing more pleasure, then your estrogen goes too high and that knocks your testosterone down. You have a spasm, you ejaculate and the testosterone goes down. So now in order to rebuild your testosterone, you have to get away from anything that produces female hormones. Let's go out and chop wood. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, people, you know, uh, back in the 90s, uh, Saturday Night Live made fun of my message, which was great. It was a great compliment. And they were saying, yes, I'm a man, I chop wood. Well, it turns out that if a man goes out and chops wood, he will produce more testosterone than if his football team wins. If his football team wins, he will arrive. If he gets a big check, he feels successful, his testosterone will go up. But if he actually goes out and chops wood, his testosterone will go up three times more. Wow. What is I don't know. It goes up higher, you know, some higher cool. amount. So chop wood. This is a, an amazing concept of masculinity needs space to do male type things and male type things are, we can now say are activities that produce testosterone. Everything we would see as female type activities mm -hmm. are activities, you know, we, we know there's things women used to do back when there was a division between the sexes. Those behaviors that women used to do, culture taught them to do, were behaviors that stimulate estrogen. If you don't make enough estrogen, you can't make babies. And while you're talking about these males, 30% that can't, are not having sex uh, is the, we're looking at like 35% of women in their thirties cannot get pregnant. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is all about not having enough female hormones to make it happen. Mm -hmm. So this is a catastrophe. This is the mm -hmm. end of civilization. Uh, this is the replacement theory, which is, you know, our population in America is dramatically going down and all you need is a few generations of guys who aren't having sex, who don't get married, they lose out. You know, we're no longer yeah. our country. This is big, big, big danger. Jap Japan is predicted like 2050 to be have no population, something like that. You yeah. know, everybody's been telling us too many people, too many. No, it's not too many people. We need to be making two babies to three babies. Everybody needs to be doing that. Uh, and it's not happening. Women don't feel the desire to make babies unless they're around unless they have good conditioning in childhood, let's put it that way. Let's say I had a mother who was happy <laughs> that she was have babies, but if you have a mother who's not happy, well, I, I don't want to be that unhappy mother with a child. Uh, yeah, it's true. There's no role model of, of happiness. Yeah. I want to I want to follow up on that. Thank you, John. The the flip side to it. Oh, the women quick, quick answer to your question. Yeah. Yeah. Males are not having sex for a variety of reasons, but one is you don't have a strong desire uh, to have sex gives you confidence. They don't have confidence that they can please a woman, that they can take the risk of rejection, and they don't know what to do to win her over, so to speak. Uh, it used to be if a woman couldn't make money and you had a job, already you had an advantage to win her over. But when women make money, they don't need you. And so yeah. you can sense that. And so it's much harder to get them to want to have sex with you. So they're just saying like, wow, you know, it's just, I'm not getting it. But two is their testosterone levels at 20 years old, another fact uh, in terms of the studies, at 20 years old, the average male has 20% less testosterone than 20 years ago. Now, as males, people need to understand this. For me to have confidence and feel good about myself and take risks, which is part of masculinity, it, the risk of facing rejection, your testosterone level needs to be 10 times higher than females, 10 times higher than females. And then in order to feel the, the passion to make a commitment, it needs to be around 20 times higher in her presence. And that's only happens when you have great sex. Okay. The only time a man's testosterone levels double uh, is great sex. It goes to the highest level. You know, nature makes it that way because it's so pleasurable and enjoyable and you feel so good about yourself that you're going to go out and have more sex. But mm -hmm. what happens is in having more sex, it's not like you should be going out there having sex with everybody. When you, when you earn your way into a woman, may basically provide for her what she needs so she wants to have sex with you. That's the problem. Women are not walking around going, I want to have sex with these guys. You know, right. if a woman wants to have sex with you, 
then you have more confidence. But even right. married men are telling me all the time, oh, my wife, she never wants to have sex. You have to like, when are we going to have it? And not have any, a lot of, lot of confusion. Then when women are in their 40s, then they're complaining, my husband doesn't want to have sex. I'm the one who wants sex. But she doesn't have the biology of sex. She's just re remembering, I want a man desiring me. I want a man who wants to be with me. That's when she says, I want sex. She's not saying that, <laughs> that my body has enough estrogen to make me desire sex. No, she's just dissatisfied and she's dissatisfied with her partner and she wants him to love her the way he used to. Because see, men can't really feel full love unless they have sex with a woman. We are limited in our ability to feel love by our hormones. Women, the love hormone is estrogen. When estrogen levels go up, appreciation, acceptance, trust, all these wonderful qualities of love dramatically go up uh, if your estrogen goes up. Women need to feel love 10 times more estrogen than men, but their mm -hmm. ability to feel love is much greater if their estrogen levels are 10 times higher than a man's. And then for her to be multi-orgasmic is where it, it doubles. Now for me at 72 years old, 73 years old, I am, my testosterone is 50% higher than when I was a young man because wow. I have sex with a woman who's multi-orgasmic. And I know how to provide that. Men do not know how to provide that for a woman. They don't have any sex education for modern women today. There's a lot of foreplay you have to do outside of the bedroom so that a woman is primed where her estrogen levels are at least 10 times higher than his. Then suddenly you can take her to a higher level if your testosterone levels are higher than hers. So you have to like, it builds on each other. You know, I, I, I do something, you feel good. I feel like I did that. My testosterone goes up. That gives me more energy to do more for her. So ultimately we have to learn not to be addicted to sex. We have to be completely non-addicted at all. So then sex is about providing for her selflessly, just like a soldier going into battles, willing to give up his life. It's selflessness. Selflessness is the ultimate enlightenment for men. For yeah. women, it's self, <laughs> I don't want to say selfishness, but really it's about women learning how to receive. Women don't know how to receive today because mm -hmm. when you're feeling high level receiving, you want to be, you want to have sex because that's yeah. the, deep, the most vulnerable receiving you can have is when another being comes inside of your vagina. <laughs> okay. Not thank you, dildo, John. Not a dildo, a okay. real penis going inside. That's brings women to the highest level of multi-orgasmic. Now, I'm not saying everybody has to have that to be happy in life. We all have our certain expectations. I'm just saying what the potential is. Just like, you know, not everybody's going to be, you know, be able to lift a certain amount of weight. Not everybody's going to be able to have their own airplane, whatever. I could care less about that. But, yeah. you know, everybody's got their thing. But from my side, so many, so much potential is there to experience unconditional love. What we need in the world today is more love, as, as impractical as that sounds, put it into practicality. It means mothers and fathers in love, staying in love, raising children with high self-esteem, without addiction, and the world becomes a better place automatically. 100% agreed. Okay, so let me ask you the next question, which was about women. Uh, study The same study found that most young women are now becoming liberal. And also the, another study done by Stanford, or sorry, Morgan Stanley, found that women, a majority of women, 50% of women by the end of this decade will be single and childless. And so that is very worrying when it comes to demographics and population, uh, but also for the future of the human race. And so that's one aspect of it is that more women are going to be single as they get older. So I wanted you to comment on that. But also I've heard this common refrain, common thought or common uh, thought shared on social media, which is that I didn't feel, I don't feel I have to be into my feelings. I, I feel like my highest expression of my love for myself is that I need to leave this relationship. And so there's a lot of that going on on social media where the feelings are trumping what's maybe better for the couple long term. So I'd love for you to give some perspective on both of these points. Let's so all just remember feelings are not facts. Yeah. <laughs> we have this idea because I feel that it, it must be true. Uh, everybody wants to kill somebody feels like I should kill you. Everybody gets divorced, says, I feel like I can't be myself with you. You can mm -hmm. be yourself. You, you know, we don't have the skills to make relationships work. So people feel powerless when they feel powerless to get what they need. And a relationship should be getting what you need. It's just today, nobody knows what they need. Let me give you an example of this pandemic that went around a very small percent of people we know it was like point something something oh 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 something actually had had terrible side effects of a bad virus okay 
-hmm. We know that they were all vitamin D deficient. We know that's a simple thing. Are you getting enough sunshine? Have you been wearing sunscreen all the time? Just every person who went to the hospital was vitamin D deficient. Now there's other things that go along with that's just one thing that we can measure. So, and it's such a small thing, but what we have to realize is those people don't know what they need. If you mm -hmm. know what you need, you don't get sick. So when anybody who's sick really doesn't know what they need, and if they can get what they need, then they're not gonna be sick. Or if they're sick, they can heal themselves. That's the point. We see obesity everywhere. We see diabetes everywhere. We see cancer everywhere. These are all people who are sick because why are they sick? Well, you can look at the biological reasons they're sick, but the, on the, the macro view, they don't know what they need. If they knew what they needed, then they would get it because it's quite available. So mm -hmm. what, what is it that you're missing? People don't know what they're missing. If women understood what they need and then how to get it, they would be very happy in their relationships, but they don't know what they need. And men don't know what they need either. Uh, okay. it, it, that's what I'm teaching people What, what in, a, in a relationship. From the point of view of people not knowing what they need, also men don't know what women need and women don't know what men need because we love each other. You want to help somebody, but if you don't know what they really need, like, honey, I need to give you some vitamin D today. I need to give you some vitamin D. So what is that vitamin D for a woman? Caring, understanding, and respect. And this is where a lot of, you know, you'll see all these people talking about male-female differences. It all comes from men are from Mars, women are from Venus. I mean, but done in their own particular way. I mean, yeah. I love it. It's great. And they don't always have the solution. They just talk about the differences, not the solution. So right. it's so many people. And then when you look at more the traditional uh, spiritual groups, the Christians and so forth, uh, which I am a Christian, uh, my background and so forth, but I respect all, all spiritual people, basically. Uh, as a, as a, a Christian, so many Christian writers get it wrong when they say they translate the Bible, which is a woman should respect her husband. What does the word respect mean? Well, look up the word in the dictionary. It also means to appreciate and admire. Okay? Mm. A man needs to be appreciated and admired. A woman, according to some translations, needs to be cherished. And when you cherish something, you respect it. The word is respect. You honor it. You seek to, to, to bless it, to understand it, to care for it, to protect it. That's what respecting is. I respect myself. I don't let people mistreat me, right? Yep. I said, dignity, don't cheat me. You're not in my life then. I said, a boundary. That's called respect. Respect myself. How do you respect a woman? You have to respect her. Men don't know how to respect. They never saw a man respecting their mother. They you see, there were traditions which did work, conservative traditions, where men would never yell at a woman and certainly never hit a woman. That's very conservative, very traditional. That's gone out the window because this stupid word respect is not understood because yes, a man needs respect, of course, but more importantly, if I want testosterone, appreciate what I do. Don't try to change me, try to improve me. Don't try to help me unless I'm asking for help and depend on me for what I can give and don't depend on me for what I can't give. See, mm. trust, you know, as soon as you disappoint a woman, she'll often go, oh, well, I just can't trust him. No, you can't trust him to turn out the light every night. He leaves it on or you can't trust him to be as clean and neat as you are or you can't trust him to drive the way you drive. But in all those situations, then what you do is you solve the problem. I used to leave the lights on when I walked through the house. I didn't care about the bill. I was making enough money. My wife was, oh, we have to turn out the lights. You expect me to turn out the lights. Then she learned how to ask. As long as she said, you left it, you forgot again. And what am I, I have to do everything for you? <laughs> like she does everything because she turns out the light, but that's how she feels. I, I respect that. But it's not in my makeup to think, make a big deal about little things. And I have a different way of looking at the world. When I go into the TV room, I don't see my she shoes. Okay, she does. Okay, so, so things are going to be a problem for her. So what does she do? Does she stop loving me? No, but in her mind, if she doesn't understand men, she will think something like this. Well, if he can't do little things for me, then what if I need something big? So he must not love me. So this is like insanity. If we don't understand men and women, we become crazy. Relationships are like so crazy. And then we, we say things to each other, not knowing how we affect each other. And then we don't know how to apologize. We say, well, that's how I feel. I should be able to say how I feel. 
And that's how even my books can be misinterpreted at times. Everything can be misinterpreted. I talk to men about how one of the hacks for men to raise women's estrogen is, is listen, be a good listener. But you can't be a good listener if your wife is just complaining about you. <laughs> <laughs> so, so women have to learn how to talk to a man so he doesn't take offense at it, so he doesn't feel put down by it, so he doesn't feel diminished. Same thing. Men have to learn how to communicate with a woman so she doesn't feel diminished. It's not just yeah. randomly say what you feel and then to believe what you feel are facts because yeah. feelings are changing up and down. You know, today I feel on top of the world tomorrow. Like, oh, my God, the crisis, the world's coming to an end. You know, oh, my God, yeah. everything's wonderful. It's, the feelings are all over the place, but feelings are important without a doubt. But we shouldn't always just say whatever we feel. We should say to the right person what we feel. For example, women come into my office every day and, and on through Zoom now, but they come in and they talk about their feelings and I see them alone. I would not see them with their partners at that time because they can freely say whatever they want to say. And as a result, they make a lot of estrogen talking about your feelings, which was a big part of Men Are From Mars. And now I talk about the hormones, why we need to do this. Men should not be talking about their feelings. If you talk about your feelings, estrogen levels go up. If you're feeling negative, you don't want more estrogen. Whenever you're feeling negative, it means your estrogen is higher than your testosterone. And if your estrogen is higher than your testosterone already, that's why you're feeling negative. You don't feel negative unless your estrogen is higher than your testosterone. So to feel better, should you be raising your estrogen more? No, you shouldn't be raising your estrogen more. So it's like, it's simple logic. Don't talk yeah. about your feelings if you're feeling negative. If a woman's feeling negative, she doesn't have enough estrogen. She needs to raise her estrogen. So talk to somebody who's not gonna feel offended by what you say, just get it yeah. out. That's called venting, letting it go, sharing your feelings without trying to change somebody. When you share your feelings with your partner, if you're a woman, you're usually complaining. You're saying these things because you want him to change. And as soon as you do anything to try to change a man, the message he gets is you don't accept me. You don't appreciate me. You don't trust me. And he shuts down to her. So then mm -hmm. we feel, women feel, men feel, I can't make this work. Yeah. And ironically, even the difference between men and women, women is when a man's done, he says, nothing I can do makes her happy. And that's part of what keeps men from being motivated with women is that they're not happy. One, they're not happy. They don't look to a man for more happiness. They're not looking for a relationship for being more happy. They're looking to be men. Let's be let's be powerful and make money and look what I can do. And then they kind of go, gee, I'm childless at, at, at 40 years old. What, what's your statistic? 50% are going to be single. Yeah. I used to say, now we've got more research. I used to say, the more educated you are, the higher your risk you have of never having children. That's it. And, and the really? more successful you are as a woman, the less risk you're going to have having children. And I'm telling you, I'm just like, I'm part of the crowd of people of my age. If I did not have a, a grandchildren and my children, my life would be totally empty, empty, mm -hmm. empty, empty. Every, every 45 year old man should start think, looking, I need to find somebody because if you don't have kids, your rest of your life is going to be this empty place. And, and, and everybody says it. Okay, so try to learn from the people as you get older. Yes, when you're younger, you can be in denial. You don't know. You're so busy with your career. You're on your male side as women. But without children, your life is empty. And this is part of femininity. Is yeah. That's what will produce more female hormones. Because see, when you're, when you're uh, going through menopause, that's why so many women are going through menopause, having so many problems. If you're a single woman going through menopause, it's much, much more difficult. And the rest of your life will be more difficult. Unless you're good fortunate to be highly spiritual and have some philanthropic service activity that you're motivated to do, that can help. But what helps the most is having a family, your family, your children who love you, who who are grateful to you. And here you are after your menopause, where are you going to make the estrogen? Your body doesn't make much estrogen. You need a lot of stimulation to make estrogen. You need a lot of love and support. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wonderful, John. Uh, another statistic is that 70 to 80 percent of divorces today are filed by women and the more educated you are if you have a college degree it's up to 80 percent of women filing for divorce and the majority of the time the husband or the man never sees it coming they're just shocked that the woman wants a divorce and typically it happens when the kids leave leave for college and they become empty nesters and i'm sure you've seen this but what can a man do to detect early signs of female unhappiness before it even gets to a divorce She's not having orgasms. 
That's a good Excuse sign. Me. She's not wanting to have sex with you. That's a good sign. And I want to give women a break here. Uh, when they when I say they're not having orgasm, it's because men don't know how to give a woman an orgasm. Okay, and they don't, they don't know how to build up her estrogen. It's much harder today. If you go to uh, when I was down in the Amazon, for example, the women are multi orgasmic. <laughs> you know, there, there's no, there are no flowers and romance or whatever. Women are multi orgasmic. It's very mm -hmm. easy for them because they're living a routine life, a nurturing life. They're raising children or they're helping people raise children. Their estrogen levels are off the chart. So men don't have to do much. But ironically, they're also very skilled lovers as well. As, mm -hmm. as primitive, we might look at them. They're amazing lovers, uh, according to the women. Uh, so, the, the, But see, it's very easy to be seen as an amazing lover, lover when, <laughs> when your estrogen levels are so high. Mm -hmm. Our culture is keeping that up. But let's keep this in mind. Another break I want to give to women, which is women don't always realize how much they keep score. Okay. They're denying their female side. It's one day they wake up and literally one day they wake up and they say to themselves, I'm giving and giving and giving, and I've got nothing. Complete irrational emotion without a doubt. But okay. it's when you're in a stressed state, you can't think rationally. When you're in a stressed state, you can't think lovingly. And if your lifestyle is such where you're not getting what you need to keep your estrogen high, levels high, 10 to 20 times higher than a man's. If a woman's estrogen levels aren't 10 to 20 times higher than your average happy man, she's going to be experiencing chronic cortisol. When she's experiencing chronic stress, what happens is she's not able to, to realize what's going on inside of her. She has no self-reflection. So basically she's stressed and she thinks the solution to her stress is to solve more problems, to do more. So you see women today are all feeling overwhelmed more so than men because women are feeling, I have to do this, I have to do this. And men are saying, well, I don't have to do that till tomorrow. <laughs> it's like, let's be reasonable here. Women just have biology and this is their biology again, being mothers, the potential to be a mother, they, they can't turn their brain off. Okay, they can't turn their brain off. We can, and now men can't. If your estrogen levels are high, you can't turn your brain off either. So you're getting a lot of men taking on female characteristics and it's not pretty. But for a woman, she can't turn her brain off. All she can do is relax her brain. And the way she can relax her brain is by doing things, being in situations where she's getting help. When a woman feels I'm being helped, I have support, I can ask for help. Others know what I need. Others are there for me. When a woman feels people are there for them and she can also ask for that is even a more powerful feeling. If you're feeling powerless and nobody knows what you need, I can ask and get it. Well, women are terrible at asking. All they do is complain. And that's complaining is a very primitive form of, of asking. Okay. It's I'm asking you with negativity. <laughs> Since when did negativity ever get a man to change? If you complain right. to a man, all it does is give him the message. He's not enough. Not enough, not enough, not enough. What raises testosterone in men is I make, I'm a good, I, I got it handled. I'm a good guy. I'm just what you need. I'm right here for you. You know, this is what women have to understand. If you want to bring out the best of the man, how to communicate in a way that brings out the best of him. Men have to understand how to communicate to a woman that brings out the best in them. And so we are, you know, there's so much going around <clears throat> about men and women or the differences, but it doesn't always come to the right solution. That's why I keep coming down to the biology of this. Like I, I hear some women objecting to some of my ideas saying, well, I think I love it when a man is in touch with his feelings and shares his vulnerability. I love that. I say, are you with a man? <laughs> no. <laughs> do you have a man who does that? Well, I've seen men do that. I love it. Yeah. And then are you in a relationship with a man who does that and do you continue to have sexual desire for him? You have no understanding of what a sexual relationship requires. When a woman feels sorry for a man, when a woman feels compassion for a man, when a woman feels empathy for a man, she produces the hormones of a mother and she can't want to have sex with him. Right. And then she'll come to me and complain, I feel like I'm his mother. Well, yeah, you make him into a child. Well, he behaves this way. No, he's behaving like a man and you're interpreting it like a child because you're in a mother mode and you're ruining everything by always telling him, you shouldn't do this. You should tell your boss this. You should take time off like this. You're not taking care of yourself. You should take care of yourself. Like she knows all better. She's talking from the high and mounty when she's the unhappy person. He's fine. So now, now clearly when he's fine, 
he's in a place of I don't have to if I don't have to do more, I'm not going to do more. I won you over with my wife. Now I'm going to stop doing all those things I did before because I don't know I have to do them. Everything right. you did in the beginning to win her over, you have to continue doing it. And when people read this book, Beyond Mars and Venus, what they realize, this is like a five minute job every day. This is an extra four hugs a day. What? How much effort does it take to give your wife four hugs a day? How much effort does it take to say certain things to her that I teach? How much effort does it take for a woman to ask for little things? There's so many practical biohacks, I call them biohacks, yeah. that are so easy. And yet if a man doesn't know, He's not going to do it. It's a matter of knowing these are the things you have to do. And guess what? They're easy to do. And you yeah. get paid a lot. A white man doesn't so, do it. So then let me ask you this, John. These are great tips, by the way. So what are the top three mistakes that men make in relationships that completely destroy her attraction and respect for you, unbeknownst to you? And on frankly, then on a subconscious level, on a biological level, she wants to leave you because she's not attracted to you anymore. Uh First, never raise your voice with anger. If you raise your voice, if you, you see women, we raise their voice, okay? When, when a woman gets angry, she gets upset or she's complaining, she's starting to get louder and louder, okay? I'm not afraid for my life when she does that. See, in the primitive part of my brain, an unhappy woman is no danger to me. But to, when a man is angry, a woman's life is in danger. And when mm -hmm. her life's in danger, then suddenly she shuts down from her ability to make estrogen. So an angry man, so, so you're having an argument with her and you're raising your voice and you're getting angry and you feel angry and she'll notice you're feeling angry before you do. So you then have to have a conversation, a uh, way of communicating, which is just a, which couples have to agree to one phrase instead of saying you're being angry because anger is natural. Okay. And, and it can sound accusatory if you're being angry, but, it's how do you deal with your anger is the key. And so what women can say at that moment is you're being insensitive. Anybody, any man who's angry, you can't be sensitive to others when you're angry, right? Nobody, yeah. and how many men your self-esteem is, gee, my wife says I'm insensitive. Yeah, <laughs> join the club. You know, we're all insensitive, you know? And, and when it, you can't go into battle if you're if you're uh, so sensitive, because you go, oh, I wanna, I wanna, uh, I don't want to hurt that person. No, you're going to kill that person. So this is part of masculinity. When it comes to if my life's in danger, my family's in danger, I'll kill you. That's mm -hmm. masculine energy. And yep. you do it without anger. You do it because it's the smart thing to do, right? So mm -hmm. when a man is angry, what he has to know, already he's in role reversal. When you're in role, re anger means your estrogen is higher than your testosterone. If you're cool, calm, and collected, and you ask questions, okay, that's the key thing is don't speak. So that'll be the second one. If you're angry, you should have a code phrase in a relationship. If she notices it first, she can say you're being insensitive and she walks out of the room. You don't follow her. Or he says, I need to think about what you're saying. And he walks out of the room. You have to have space at that time. You can't have these angry arguments and expect to have sex. In the beginning, you can. This is the, everything has a flip side to it. It's called makeup sex. And there's no doubt when couples are all the time suppressing their feelings, then they have a big fight. They have great makeup sex. Okay. There's no quite why, because they were able to deal with their, their emotions could come up. But then after a few of those, it builds mistrust because ultimately, yeah, you feel better because you, you know, got your emotions out, had a catharsis, but nothing changed in your life. You're you, they create your safety. It will just activate again, a few of those. And now suddenly you don't have any interest in having sex with your partner. The attraction goes away. So that's one time out. That's the time out thing from both sides. It's not just men do it. Women can be responsible as well. If your husband's angry with you, let's agree. We have a, we have a safe word. The safe word is you're being insensitive and she's going to walk out of the room. He has a safe word, which is, I need to think about that and walk out. You know, the other day, I don't know what is, is when uh, something really bad happened. There was a disturbance in the force. I'm very in touch with the universal experience. So there was a disturbance in the force big time recently. Uh, that's when President Trump was shot. Three days ago, yeah. That was a that was a disturbance in the force. I could not understand what's going on inside of me. I was, you know, my wife wanted to talk to me and I just, I don't really want to talk. Oh, what is it? You don't want to talk? Are you not feeling good? No, I'm not feeling good. I'm actually suffering inside. There's something happening inside of me. Uh, and she's, well, what is it? Tell me, tell me, tell me. I said, no, 
I'm not telling you. I need to figure it out first. I need to think about it. But she kept persisting. And then I forgot my skill. And I said, well, I'm just feeling annoyed about everything. Oh, you're annoyed with me? I said, I'm annoyed about everything right now. <laughs> not just you. Oh, but you're annoyed with me? You don't want to have this conversation? No, I don't want to have this conversation. And then she takes that personally and she gets her feelings hurt and hang. It was on a phone call and hangs up. So, <laughs> so they, I didn't follow my own instructions, which is we didn't use the safe word because it's very rare for me to experience suffering inside, just like shooting a president is very, very rare. Uh, so I was affected by that. It took me about two hours to be done with it because I know how to process any negativity inside of me. It's all craziness. It's not me. I'm this wonderful, loving person. I'm a happy person. There's no reason for me not to be happy. There's no reason for anybody not to be happy part of the day. Yeah. You know, there's things to be unhappy about and things to be happy about. But we don't have that balance in our life because we're confused. Males are becoming too feminine. And that's why they get angry. They get grumpy. They become irritable. They can't make a commitment. And oh my gosh, once you can make a commitment to a woman, since you are the anti-aging guy and you're all about health and wellness, let's look at the number one anti-aging thing, which is marriage. Married people live longer and have less sickness and less disease. Let's just put it. These are real facts. Single people have less less longevity and they have less uh and, and they have more sickness okay this this mm -hmm. is th these are facts we've big yeah. studies show married people live longer then when i tell people this they go oh yeah those are the people with the happy marriages no those are the people who stay married okay that married people go through their suffering single people are going through their suffering they think oh, if only i found the right person i would be happy i'm just not happy married people if only my partner would change, I would be happy. But at least they're doing one thing right. They're committed to loving each other as best they can. They're committed. Mm -hmm. They're staying in that relationship. And unfortunately, it's suffering for them too. But they will live longer. They will be happier. And we can't measure their happiness level because you're not always unhappy when you're suffering in a marriage. You're not always unhappy uh, when you're a single person. So it, it's just the brain always wants to find a reason to to justify I'm the victim. And that's the worst thing for men. It's normal for women to go into victim. I'm not getting this. I'm not getting this. Then they have to learn how to balance their feminine, the dark feminine with their masculine, which is, okay, if I'm not getting this, how can I get it? And then go out and learn how to get it. Unfortunately, when you read a lot of books on relationships, they all just say the man should change. The man should change. They have no idea how women need to change. Yeah. There's, and and not, I won't say all books. There's a wonderful book for women called Fascinating Womenhood, uh, which I was very lucky. My wife, Bonnie, of 34 years, she read that book when I started dating her. So it was she was already practicing being feminine. I, I don't agree with everything in that book, but I agree with a lot of it because all those things were more traditional ideas of how a woman should be, how she respond, what it means to love a man, how does it feel to love a man. And simply put, Loving your man is trusting him to do his best for you, not trying to change him and appreciating what he does for you and trusting him enough to ask for help, but learning how to ask for what you want in a way that's not a complaint, the way it's not an offense. These are practical schools. So we ask for three things. Don't get angry when she's talking. Stay quiet, men. Ask questions. What questions to ask? Well, not all men are that very lot. You know, they don't all have great conversational skills, particularly when emotions come up. And this is proven out by science. Women have nine times more connective tissue in their brain, so they could be listening and feeling and thinking all at the same time. Men sort of more do one at a time. <laughs> so he's listening to you, trying to make sense of what you're saying. Then suddenly you have emotions. He's connecting with your emotions. He can't think at that time, nor can he think what, what's the best thing to do. So the best thing to do is don't talk. I have a little tape thing on my on mirror it's not always there, but the, the person cleans it off. But they, they it says, don't speak. <laughs> don't speak. <laughs> just speak less. Ask questions more. So, okay. but a good step is just to stare and just look at her and, and, and don't speak. Because if you speak and you're being annoyed or irritated or feeling frustrated or afraid, oh my God, this could turn into some big long argument. If you speak, you're already on your female side if you have a negative emotion. Then if you speak, it only increases more estrogen. So don't, mm. so I give men a reason, logical reason, don't speak. And she'll want to say, well, what do you think? What are you feeling? I said, actually, I need to think more about what you're saying. Tell me more. I need to think more. I need to understand better. 
because understanding is one of the primary needs of women to feel that you understand what they're going through. Yeah. And if you're feeling the slightest bit of annoyance by what she's going through, then her message she gets is you don't understand. So you don't have to understand. You can just say, I need, I need to hear more to understand. So I want to understand. Tell me more. I don't have it completely yet. Well, tell me more. Well, why, why are you feeling that? But in a non-accusatory way. So I just suggest some three simple questions, which is, well, help me understand that better. I want to understand this. Well, tell me more. Tell me more. Oh, mm -hmm. what, what else? What, and just stand there. Well, what else? And then she will have nothing more to say. You know, men complain. She can go on forever. That's because we interrupt and we say something like accusatory, the same phrase, depending on the tone of voice is, well, why would you feel that? Well, why would you feel that? You know, norm, implying normal people don't feel that way. Right, right. How could you feel that way? Why would you think that? That's a, a insulting to her as opposed to, well, help. Instead of why do you feel that? You could say, help me understand that better. Tell me more. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, what else? What would feel good to you? And it, just hear it. Say, well, I'm taking it all in. I'm taking it all in. Well, what do you think? What do you feel? I need to think about it. Done. <laughs> We're over it. We create the argument. You know, it's just simply yeah. like, I mean, she's her side of it, but we're on our side of it. And she's just doing what's natural to her because when women are emotionally upset, they're not coming from the prefrontal cortex of the brain. Simple put, they're not logical at that time. Yeah. Women can be very logical and they're embarrassed to not be logical. And therefore they they say, yes, this is what I feel. And it's very logical. <laughs> <laughs> I have to find reasons. And I would do it as well if I'm on my female side. So when I talk about women, I could also be true for men who are on their female side. We have to justify how we feel. We can't mm -hmm. just, you know, can't be there for her. That's what communication is all about for her. So you said one thing, don't be angry. Two, don't interrupt. Three, do biohacks. Biohacks, and I'll just give a few because I got a whole book filled with them, right? So, but one is just four hugs a day. Four hugs a day, you basically find her. She doesn't find you uh, getting up, finding her, or she's she's uh, you're up, and then she gets up. Oh, honey, let me give you a hug. And then, oh, you're going to work. Oh, let me give you a hug. And then, oh, I'm back home from work. Let me find you and give you a hug. First thing, first thing, first thing. Then another biohack is she every day she has to ask for something. See, women complain because they haven't been asking. Why do they wake up one day, women do? It's because they're on their male side, but finally they come back to their female side, out of balance, and all it is is mistrust, negativity, and their brain just says, I do all this stuff. And she has no awareness of how she's been pushing him down the whole time. And that, that's what I say for all the women listening who like, you know, you get a divorce, you don't get married again. That's also another statistic. And if you do, it's after nine years, okay? so. Mm -hmm. Slim picking after nine years. <laughs> so, right. so, so basically, get back on the horse. You got to start dating away very soon. You need to start dating and practice new dating skills. You have to realize that, yeah, my partner was a jerk, but I didn't know how to bring out the best in him. I made a lot of mistakes. How can I not blame him for my mistakes? Because that's what everybody wants to do. They say, well, yeah, I got angry, but you should have heard what he said. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got angry. Or yeah, you rejected him. Or yeah, you said no to sex. Or you rejected him sexually. Women do have no idea how important sex is for a man. Yes. You know, it's like, and all these biohacks are all what man can do for a woman to raise her estrogen so that she's going to want to have sex with him. Because the truth is a woman can't want to have sex with a man <laughs> unless she mm -hmm. has enough estrogen. And if a woman is just having sex just to please me, I don't want that. And yeah. the more, more conscious men become, they only want to have sex with their wives when their wives want to have it. And this, this is a whole another 30 minute discussion. Yeah, totally. To solve so, that problem. But yeah. there's solutions to it. My books solve all those problems, but people don't know how to solve it. So they know yeah. man's feeling like I'm not getting sex. I'm not getting love, not being appreciated. Woman's feeling he doesn't care. He's not there for me. I feel unsupported. I don't feel acknowledged. I don't feel validated. I don't feel safe to talk to him. He's in a bad mood all the time. He gets angry. Well, of course you're going to want to leave unless you understand how you are the responsible person there. It's not all about him. The number one concept here is women need to learn how to be happy and look to a man for happier. And a man needs to look at his own life without a woman, with my work. With my work, I'm happy. And by sharing the benefits of my work with her, I'm happier. So it's a Love different that. dynamic.
You know, I mean, just just so proud when he can do something for his wife that she needs financially. But today you can't. And even if you can't, if she's making money, it doesn't mean anything to her. Yeah. Well, you work, but I work too. Oh, you gave me money. I don't need that money. I can do it myself. So there's no biological basis for her to feel appreciation and love for him unless, and this is where this book goes further into it, which is the recognition that women today, when they're more independent, they need a new kind of help to come back to their female side. That's the vitamin D for women, is that women have to learn, I'm as a woman, I have to learn how to be vulnerable in the presence of a man, how to use a man to become even more vulnerable, because you can't have sexual feelings unless you feel safe to be vulnerable because sexual feelings come from the highest level of estrogen, which is when you can be vulnerable and you feel safe in the presence of a man. You're trusting him. You're not trying to change him, control him because you feel safe. And then you appreciate him because he can do so much for you. So it's a higher level of emotional support. So we become adept at learning as men, we have to provide a new kind of emotional support, just making money, having a job, certainly their requirements, but not as important as it used to be if a woman yeah. can make money herself. Perfect. Thank you, John. We've got four minutes, so I'm, I'm going to be quick. I've got two questions for you, and you can just answer very quickly. One of the questions I get in today's day and age is if men want to be masculine, the masculine imperative is to be leading, to making decisions, to, to everything, so you're making your wife trust you and making her life easy. But in today's day and age, if men are just focused on work and they're not taking the time to book reservations for date nights, they're not spending the time on what I need to do for vacations, what I need to get for her, what type of food. I don't know if food is what a man should be worried about. But if if he wants to lead his woman so she can relax into her feminine, what are the day-to-day activities that he could be doing that get her to trust him? Okay, so there's this whole idea that you use the word lead. All right. It's so misunderstood. It's like, well, I make the decisions. Well, you make the decisions after hearing her point of view and honoring her point of view as much as your own point of view and finding cooperation with it. And in the cooperation, then there's the leading. So here's how I would see it. Uh, Leading to make a date. Well, men are going to stop leading to make a date when every date you make, she complains. (laughs) Well, you should have done this. Right. So we need our side to feel that we, if we lead, we can be successful. So in the dating situation, it's a woman's responsibility. If she wants lasting love, she needs to have a conversation with her partner. She needs to ask him, Hey, I've been looking at some fun things that I would like to do. And here's three things I'd like to do. Would you pick one and plan it and provide it? Okay. Then he leads by taking the responsibility for taking the action based upon finding out what she would like and what she wants. Okay, Mm -hmm. then, but a variety of things. So then you don't feel like your wife's just telling you, okay, take me here, take me there. Then when you take her there, then, uh, then it's like the burdens on her because she, see women, just like a man, when you take a woman on a date, you, you want her to be happy, right? And you feel like, oh, I hope this is going to work out. If I took my wife to a movie and it was a terrible movie, I'm feeling a little depressed. You know, oh, I blew it. You know, I picked the wrong movie. All yeah. right. So that's responsibility for a date. Well, responsibility and reliability, these are masculine qualities. I'm taking charge. I'm going to lead the way. I'm going to pick the date, but I'm going to pick the date based upon hearing your options that would work for you. So many options that work for her then I'm going to be the leader and pick the, the, the date. And then she doesn't feel the pressure or the burden that he's doing this for me. He's the one who picked it, but she does feel the pressure and it won't be much pressure because she's picked those things. And there's things that she, she knows would make me happy. So it's like, she needs to think, what are three things this weekend that next week, next weekend. And here's another biohack, never plan a date on the day of the date or even the day before the date. You do it a week in advance because you plan the day together. She she talks about things that she would like to do. He can always join in and suggest some things, but it's not what he'd like to do. First mistake I made in my marriage with Bonnie. I say, hey, honey, let's go to the movies tonight. She says, well, I'd like to go to the symphony. And well, actually what I said, honey, what do you want to do tonight? She said, well, we could go to the symphony. And I said, well, what about going to this movie? And she'd say, okay, because in her world, is that women have a, a greater tendency in the beginning to be pleasing. All right, I want to please my partner. Okay, we'll go to the movies. But in her mind, she's thinking next time he's going to want to do what I want to do. 
But in my mind, I'm thinking we went to the movies because that was the best idea for both of us. <laughs> so she said, yes. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> so a date should be what a woman wants to do, not what a man wants to be done. Very little consideration for what he needs or wants. Uh, it's primarily he's not only willing to lead and do it, but he's happy to do it. He doesn't complain at all. Oh, I had to do this. And he never says, oh, well, I did this because she's going to occasionally say, what do you do for me? Well, I did this and this and this. What you say at those times <laughs> is you say, well, help me understand how you feel about that. Help me understand what's going on. What else is going on? What else is going on in your life? I really want to know because you're not very happy right now. I want to figure out what I can do to support you. So these yeah. are all the art of relationships. It's tremendously different now. We have no role models for it. And we don't have role models for traditional uh, relationships. Yeah. It's fascinating as always, John. I have 10 more questions for you, but we don't have the time to get I into I like them. your questions. One last question. I can give a quick answer. What is it? Okay. The, um, in the age of unlimited graphic gra gratification, in the age of unlimited gratifications and easy options, you're swiping right, you're swiping left. Why would somebody or couples, women, men make the hard decision to work through the tough times with each other as opposed to finding a better cherry on the tree, a better apple, a better, you know, the grass is greener on the other side? So you answered the question. So I told you I'd give a short one. There's no reason to. That's why men are not making that commitment. Uh, is it's too easy. And and by the way, their apps are not so easy because it's only 10% of men are getting the women. 90% are not yeah. are being rejected. So they go to porn. And if I could add those three things a man could do, uh, I don't even know if I, yeah, those are what men could do. I didn't focus on women could do. We should do another one. But yeah. the, the, uh, the most important thing is give up porn. Give up porn. Mm -hmm. Give up having sex with yourself. Sex with yourself will lower your testosterone. I believe it's the number one reason why males are having lower testosterone. The number one reason males don't find the power inside of them to be so committed to a woman that she doesn't have to be perfect. You have to have strength and awareness. One is knowledge, but you also have to have the strength inside to be able to stand there while, while somebody's not happy with you all the time. Because nobody's ever going to be happy with you all the time. And you're not going to be happy with your partner all the time. We should be realistic. So you take space, you find your happiness, then you can come back and overflow. We shouldn't be too dependent on our partners for our happiness. We should depend on our partners to become happier. I love it. Where can people find more about you and check out your website and Instagram and social media? Okay, so Soul Search on Instagram. I think I have an Instagram, but I've been doing a lot of things on another Instagram site, Soul Search. Every Wednesday at seven o'clock Pacific time, I do a one hour meditation for people if they want to join into that through the Soul Search group. Uh, we also have a course with the Soul Search group, Relationship Mastery. They can go there. They can go to my website, marsvenus.com, and we have free course right away for you there. Also, we have online six-week courses and so forth people can sign up for. Those cost something to do. The best one on there is, I, I think it's better, it's my, my daughter doing it, but I went over the whole script with her and edited it with her. And it was a wonderful experience for us. It's called Understanding Men from a Woman's Perspective. It's so mm -hmm. powerful for women to take that course. So that that is an imperative for women to understand that in my mind, if you want to have a long-lasting loving relationship. So that's marsvenus.com. At the top of the page, you can sign up for our free course. At the top of the page, there's a recommendation of supplements. I know many of your people listening love supplements. It's the supplement that nobody else promotes. I used to have 40 supplements I promoted in a health food store. Everybody's doing it so good, people like you. Okay, great. But there's one that nobody's doing, and that's the one at the top of the page. It's called Elemental Orotates. It causes brain regeneration. It causes balancing moods. If you're a man, you, if your moods are very, very stable, you might not notice anything. But anybody has ups and downs uh, to any degree that you would prefer to change, that is the most powerful supplement. No time to talk about the details, but click on the male version or the female version, and you can. Uh, it'll take you to Amazon, big write-up on it. You can see all the endorsements from people. It's fantastic. I've been promoting it for 25 years. And then I used to have all these other things that would help as well. But I think mood balance is one of the most important things. Wonderful. John Gray, thank you so much for coming on the show. Appreciate it.